they had an old, you know, even before 83, you had a connection with her. Yeah, I uh, think I began to stay there from 73. Yeah, and she got her workshop in 78. Right. Yeah, so that was... Some of the tailors used to come from here. Yes. That's from right. that's she right. sourced them from Calcutta, that's right. right? That's right. Because they were very good in their yeah. craft. They, were they very, very still good. are, aren't they? Uh, or not so? Most of them have, the good ones are either have either passed away or too old to do it. So they didn't pass it on to their sons? And daughters? A lot of them don't want to do the same work, hmm. unfortunately. And those who do, like for instance, uh, Ritu Kumar's team is all from Calcutta. Yeah. You know, she has, because she started her work here also. So she had that accessibility at a time when these things weren't popular. Right. So uh, she has a lot of people. And, um, but the old Zardozi embroiderers, for instance, here are not many that who are good. Who are good now. Oh. That's the pity of it. That's you know how strange it is that uh, once I had gone for a recce mm -hmm. in Bombay mm -hmm. uh, and I went to, what was the name of that slum, it was somewhere in Chembur or... Dharavi? Not Dharavi. Okay. Further to the east, Chembur. Ha, 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 ha. And Mankhurt. Uh, right, right, right. Okay. Etc. Mm -hmm. So I had to do some shooting. And in one of the slums, the huge slum, mm -hmm. uh, a certain section was uh, inhabited by Bangladeshi refugees. Okay. And they were. So Such good. great artisans. Absolutely. Absolutely great artisans. Embroidery. Living. Even weaving. Living even weaving. Weaving also. Absolutely. At top of the line. They used to do the muslin first from there in Bangladesh. That right. was. And then when in during partition they moved this side. When Bengal. You know, in up. this connection. Hmm. Uh, Manu and I had several meetings. Yeah. Once I was given sort of support to do a worldwide pro project on cotton mm -hmm. and how it changed mm -hmm. history. Okay. So, uh, you know Gandhi's famous right. thing also. Right. He, uh, uh, that was part of his yeah. public image that he was the spinning wheel. And I was really looking forward. There was a millionaire from uh, Switzerland mm -hmm. who had committed a million dollars <coughs> to the project. It was supported by UNESCO and the government of India, mm -hmm. etc. <coughs> but uh, there again, it is to warn you that you be very careful in how you go about doing what you're doing. That is, we needed about two and a half million more okay. for it. Uh, she knew that I had this project, okay. Manu. <coughs> and I told her definitely that it would that I would have her as mm -hmm. one of the team. Right. And we were to shoot in every continent. Oh, okay. Because wow. it, it was a global. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't get that two and a half million support uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. So scraps of that were when we were trying to collect mm -hmm. uh, interest 
global interest in the project. So some people took scraps from different places from uh, from our project, which was overarching mm. the entire globe, and they made little television. You know the stupid kind of things that you see on television. Uh. The idiot box. They they made it with those kind of budgets as well. So. Uh, and no research or homework into it. There was no. They just that, took yeah. things from. Few things from my script and they did that. Over and over again. But uh, so, so I'm telling you also to be very careful in how you put it together, sure. pitch it, etc., etc. Do you know now that you're talking about this? I'll, my mother <coughs> did uh, uh, in 1959. She did a fashion show for Khatao Mills right. for the Damascus Cotton Fair, which was held there. Yes, yes. And uh, sadly, Khatao has no material, no information because their mill got burnt down. And then when uh, one of the senior people there passed away, whatever else there was just went away. There is no <coughs> record anywhere. There is a Katao granddaughter that I know. You want to contact her? Rina. Uh, I've contacted she's, Rina. She's she doesn't she's know. Now has a different name. Okay. It's not Rina. Okay. Oh. Is it Mana? She lives okay. in London and she's okay. she was a, uh, into uh, cybernetics before it hit the world. Okay. And now she's a designer. Very very lovely girl. She is. She's Kamlini's daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, Kamlini was a Katao. Yes, yes. And Gotham's, Gotham Sarabe's daughter. Okay. She lives in London. Okay. We have so sent a uh, message to Calico in Gujarat. I haven't heard back from them yet. Uh, yeah. Maybe they have some records. But yeah. You see, Katao's case Calico was very unfortunate. Because everything got burnt. I know so the whole very, Bombay, very bad. Bombay situation. scenario changed because of the Qatar. Yes, yes. The trade union leader, leader. what is Data Saban? Yes, yes. And because he had paid one of them, the other one shot him down. Yeah. Very unfortunate. That's when the whole milk culture collapsed in Bombay. Yes. And now we have mons. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, uh, one of uh, there, there are four or five, uh, not sure four or five, at least three trunks of uh, different fabrics that we also have, right? So, one of the things we need to figure out is why were those uh, stored? Is it just to make multiples of costumes? Or no, what she did was wherever she traveled, if she found something that caught her eye, yes. she'd pick it up. That's right. And then whenever a project arose where it could be used, she would use it. Because I have another five, six trunks at home full of the fabrics. I've just sorted them, you know, section wise. But it's a lot of fabric, and I'm loath to really give it to the local darzi because that will be you know it, it really won't be of any use so i would like somebody to utilize it yeah, my, my, my point was that why were they selected in the first because place? it caught her eye why i mean uh, I for them <coughs> see uh, for instance the hand looms and things whenever she went to particular regions she picked up fabrics from those regions <coughs> So that she knew that if she had a project where she, which was uh, located at that site, she <coughs> could use it. Oh yes, oh yes. Fabrics. Definitely. Uh, fabrics Definitely. And, uh, Some were fabrics which were uh, either dying out. That was one of her things. 
uh, fabrics that were also like every area has a certain printing texture say or an embroidery so that in a way catalogs that you have the history of that fabric so uh, from that point of view it, even when she went to places like Thailand and she always picked up something that was local and very um, important in because she used to do a lot of reading also so she knew exactly uh, besides the other fabrics that were used for her normal costumes those were separate those were standard fabrics that would look good on screen you know for their drapes or their fall but see for instance if you look at her collection of Rajasthan fabrics it like tells its own story or even the jewelry pieces that she has of the villagers Rajasthan Kutch. Kutch, yeah. and Sin are the cradle of what Banu used to call surface design what, globally surf surface design yeah Rajasthan, Kutch and Sin. And a little more northwards, you could Multan, yeah, yeah. etc. Because all the dyeing, impermeable dyes, started there. You know? And uh, when you talk about muslin, so. Muslin has grown out of the trade that was there between the Sumerian civilization yes. and the Indus History. Valley. Right. This was the kind of nature of discussion I would have with Manu. Yeah. You know? Right. So she was she a. She, she was a. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, like a theoretician as well, like a no, she, she was, was an, an academic. She academic, was, a, so she was an artist. An academic, and that. she was interested in all this. I I was doing all this kind of research for my own project, which was global. You know? So I had support from UNESCO and Jawaharlal Nehru Trust, etc., etc. So then I would tell her these things. And of course she was interested. And even for the Kunti project, uh, she initially, for instance, got a bit uh, offended when I told her that, uh, you know, Kunti belongs to an era, it's a reference to an era where uh, I had read the Mahabharata, you see. Mm -hmm. She had not. So I told her that it's, they, are, they were tribals. Mm -hmm. So they, none of the cloths that we have, you know, right. is correct. Mm -hmm. And it was more a rough texture, more hard kind of. The in fact, she was shocked. <laughs> so I said, "No, don't worry. I will even show you what they wore." <laughs> and then she got convinced. <laughs> I took her to a great friend of mine <laughs> who comes from. <laughs> Did you have one? Huh? I'm red cha bolachila. Who comes from the great Vallabha Charya oh. tradition oh, oh, oh. through Srinathji and all that? Okay. <laughs> and he has a shawl which extends right up to there, let us say. Oh. You know? And uh, the shawl, as the Mahabharata says also, is made of that wood. Oh. It's the bark of the wood. Oh. I actually showed it to her. Oh, wow. OK. 
Okay. So that's what they used to wear, or they used to wear skin. Uh -huh. They used to wear skin. No. Yes, Park pounding you do in Hawaii. In Hawaii. They pound it and they yes. it in I've been trying to find out uh -huh. since that time. Since I, this was even before the Cotton Project that I was reading the Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. And I'd found that out so since that time. It was early 70s. <coughs> that uh, if there are places in India so where they're doing it, and I'm sure there are. Some people have told me of villages oh. in Kerala. I've, I've never been able to go there. Okay. But the uh, Kerala Emporia don't have it. So it's very important, uh, I mean, if you want to go further and further yeah, yeah, sure. into Banu's work yes. uh, and even build upon it as something important uh, to Indian culture, okay. as not only its preservation, but its renewal, yes. it's revival. Uh, revival. It's, uh, it's, it's very important. So then she went around looking for the right fabric which would imitate that best mm -hmm. because we couldn't possibly get the right correct get correct. that bark mm -hmm. so she was in Hawaii she would tell you mm. you know how that tradition ah. it's it as far as textiles are concerned these are things which started started the textile traditions mm -hmm. Like the surface design. True. Uh, a lot of work. A lot of work. The word, what, what's the genesis of the word surface design? Isn't that a lot of the. As against uh, structural design, architecture. You know, in that dyeing, printing, embroidery, all that comes into that. But there's also a lot of, uh, a lot of the fashion as we saw from uh, the last exhibit that we had in Goa, uh, a lot of the, I remember a collection of uh, I think 12 blouses from blouses, uh, yeah. Rajasthan and all of them had various decorations and various, uh, correct, correct. Uh, it was not, it was not just a simple fabric, it was uh, designed with, uh, in, a, in a very complex way built up. But a lot of but them were, wants. no, a lot of them were typical to particular tribes also. Right. Because at one yes. point, Gujarat, Rajasthan had a lot of tribes. And they were identifiable by that because that was what was made in their area. Nobody went out to shop for it. Including nomadic communities. No, including nomadic so it's communities. It's like a signature. Yeah. Like yeah. cuisine. Yeah, it's very, very specific. So you can have that. Every corner has a small bar. I mean, uh, as if we have to, as if two weren't enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the basically, whatever space you're in, that has to have a bar, so that you don't have to go too far. <laughs> mm. Right. So did she find the? Uh, was she able to find the cloth that she was looking for for the? Uh, yes, we performed with that cloth. She showed it to me. I approved of it. So, uh, you were the director and the producer uh, uh, for that. How did the, like you said you approved of it, right? So that means that you were the director. Right? Yes. I approve of everything that is done for my film or my yeah. thing. Right. So that's how it, it worked. A lot of the costumes that are left uh, in her archives were, I believe, the ones that she had made prior to approval, some of them. No, and some of them were made for Hima Devi. Who's that? Uh, Hima Devi had the Hima, Hima Devi Kala Kendra. She was a dancer. And then she had this theater. So you're talking about theater costumes? You're talking about the, uh, theater, costumes. theater costumes. I'm talking about theater costumes. Yeah, yeah. So she had given my mother the opportunity of coming to Mumbai and staying at her place. And her mother, Mrs. Chatterjee, was working in a magazine and she had 
taken my mother's sketches there. So my mother got a job there even before she joined JJ. I knew those are Chatterjee connections. Okay. Yes. <laughs> ah. So uh, then uh, Hima Devi did a lot of plays. And in fact, most of the young actors were uh, trained at her plays. And mummy used to make the costume. She did Hamlet. <coughs> she did um, Taming of the Shrew. So for the Shakespearean plays, my mother made the dresses. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was something she did as her debt of gratitude to Hima Devi. So you should do a special book on that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not getting enough information on her. Sadly, nothing is available. Whatever I've got are from either newspaper reports or uh, I, Dolly's uh, son did a little bit of research. I've got that. I've tried to tap one of the actors. I finally, I found two. One of them says he doesn't remember anything. He's from the Hithkari family. He doesn't remember anything. And there's another one called Ali Khan who has agreed to speak. So let's see. Is that how she knew Alkazi? She knew Alkazi from the time um, she was a painter at JJ School of Art. Yeah. He was in Bombay then. He had this, uh, there was this place which was a hub in Breach Candy, very near that Sun restaurant. That's right, the center. So he was very active there. All the artistic and creative people yeah, yeah. were there. She and knew Akbar also. That's right, that's right. So and she people knew, like she knew Akbar, as in who? Akbar Padamsi. Who she? Manu, yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, you once had mentioned to me. He took my wedding pictures. He took your wedding pictures. That's right. That's right. When I had a little. Um, the next day, when I had a little ceremony where all my aunts wore the old heirloom uh, nine yard saris, Akbar that, took black and white pictures. That photograph that you have that's with right. your mother, yeah. that's your wedding photograph, yeah. that yeah. would be, have been taken by Akbar. Yeah. Yes, yes, all those. So all Akbar was a very close friend. He used to be dropping yeah. in yeah. at then Shankarbar. Even uh, Gai Tonde, yeah. because she was part of Progressives. Yes, yes. She was called in to be part of Progressives. At, at Shankar Bahal, at Shankar Bahal. Bahal. Bahal where I was living. She was the next door neighbor. Yeah. And her workshop was done. Then there was uh, like Alak Nanda, and she were had become great friends. So Alak Nanda would communicate with her a lot and they'd spend yeah. time together. In fact, Alak Nanda sent some lovely letters. And then sadly, she just got galloping cancer. And yeah. She was Ibrahim Al-Qazi's first heroine. Alak Nanda. Mm. Actually, for the Shakespeare connection, she would have been very central. Mm -hmm. If you, I think they did Othello. I think Who? Alak Nanda did Othello. I think. No, uh, for uh, no, she had go, she had gone to Radha. Yes. So as a result, she knew the best Shakespearean actors. Yes. As well as the voice expert called Cecily Berry. Mm -hmm. And we had done a workshop or two in London mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and uh, she even knew uh, Anthony Hopkins mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. Some of them known mm -hmm. stars of Shakespeare in theatre. And also afterwards her husband was a, it's a very well respected journalist. Yes. He was a Frenchman. So they used to have all these, as as she used to say, they were like you Bengalis call addas, artistic gatherings yeah, yeah. where we would s <coughs> interact. Yes, sir. That uh, breaking up with the Bhulabai they side, uh, and you know, I think that's a huge loss to Bombay. Yes. Uh, nothing else has come up as a center where you can just 
hang out and talk art, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, at one stage there used to be after Bhulabai closed down, there used to be Samovar, yeah. Jahangir Art Gallery. That was Just another hub. That was another hub. That's also gone. Around. That's also gone. In and fact, Malvika Sanghi has grown too much, too long. Yeah. And also, you know, in the old days, people commune things. Yeah. It was a great interaction and something new would always emerge from that. Then later people started getting people started getting very um, secretive, very I know. inward. Th that kind of killed that healthy discussion that used to happen. Even Banu In fact, became my very Banu, my scared of sharing things with them. Yes some of the aspiring costume designers and I used to tell her don't be you have to pass on your talent and information your education your experience I used to tell her that very often in and fact she used your to instituting those yeah. scholarships in fact she used to uh, once I remember I was coming into the workshop when he had just left so I said, what new project is cooking? And she said, no, nothing. He, she said, we are just having a discussion. We are recharging our batteries because there are very <laughs> few people one can talk to. So it was, uh, you, know, you, you have to feel comfortable being open. And not many people were like that later on. Everybody became very closed. Why didn't Memoir to the Future finish? The funding didn't happen. The person who was the principal funder, uh -huh. I mean it was a trust, she was, hmm. she was uh, the person I'm speaking of, Matty Harris, hmm. had an accident. No, she's really invested a lot of time and care into building this. So who's done the acoustics? I'm not sure. Actually, he's the best person to ask. He was at the inauguration. One of the few privileged people. <laughs> Nothing like that. But I just took my kids recently and the whole family, in fact, to see this uh, Mama Mia show, the, the Broadway show. Uh, right. Beautiful. It's, uh, you know, we're getting the opportunities to see a lot of shows. Their opening yeah. program, which was Trace the History of India, was beautifully done. Beautifully done. Achha. Manish Malhotra did the costumes. Mm. Beautifully done. And, I mean, there were like 80 people on stage, or sometimes over 100 people on stage, and coordinating their movements. Tremendous. Tremendous. But for me, for instance, I'm such a South Mumbai type. Uh -huh, I know. To go so far. It's too far. The thought With the is. the traffic as well. If I have to go beyond Nehru Science Museum, it's <laughs> like. <laughs> That's so South Mumbai, uh, <laughs> smoky, you know, that we don't go up. Uh, <laughs> and get caught in the traffic. Remember that time when we went to Mita? I was stuck in the traffic. It took me three hours to come back from Meeta's oh. place to Kulaba. <laughs> Meeta said to give you her salams. She said, oh, how lucky you are you're meeting him. I messaged She's been her. Saying I've messaged her. She'll come and give me a big hug. So <laughs> a salam is not good enough. <laughs> She's doing so many programs now. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. A lot of shows. She was the uh, sort of at that show. Yeah. She was assisting Banu and uh, uh -huh. Adak. Uh -huh. Which show are you talking about? The Kunti show. Kunti. Kunti and the Human Voice together. Jean Cocteau's uh, The Human Voice. Both the uh, parts were done by Alaknanda. Two in totally different. Uh, Periods, eras. Was Even Why did you think about doing those two uh, solo performances? What was your 
uh, what was your motivation there? You know, Alec was at Elphinstone right. College with me. Uh -huh. uh, she was a year senior, actually. And uh, so she knew me from that time. Mm. And she was very dissatisfied with the kind of uh, things that were happening in Bombay. Mm -hmm. That she had, uh, I mean, she had interacted with the world's best yes, actors. Yes, yes, absolutely. So she asked me whether I'd do a theatre production. Mm -hmm. so I said, I've never done theatre, nor have I. Mm -hmm wanted to, but since you want it, I'll do it, I'll do it. So then we chose these two. Okay. Kunti because I, I knew the Mahabharat so right, well. Right. And G. Shankar Pillai who yeah. from Kerala mm -hmm. was also interested. Mm -hmm. uh, the human voice because I had worked with Bresson. Oh, right. He was a friend of Jean Cocteau's. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. The voice is also made into a wonderful film by Rosalini, acted by Anna Magnani, oh. called La Mora. So okay. uh, we worked a bit on the text in English, is not as good mm -hmm. the one that has been published. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to the Cocteau Foundation or estate mm -hmm. and tell them that we are going to change it somewhat. Mm -hmm. The changes were not substantial. Okay. The changes were that of tone right. and of uh, and of the way you do the vowels mm -hmm. in uh, in French. French, okay. And since we had to deal with the human voice. Right. Uh, I mean, I was very dissatisfied with the, with the translations available in English. And I told Alak that we have to get this. So we worked together, <laughs> along with somebody from the audience process, to get that feel of the, you know, baby sounds, uh -huh. which, uh, the French language has much more than the English. Like, okay. uh, oh, 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 you know? Okay. And uh, so uh, they were delighted, actually, the Cocteau Foundation. Okay. And when we <laughs> sent them our version, okay. I don't know whether they published it finally. Wow, okay. It, and, you know, in the production of that play, it is emphasized that she uh, is more or less like, uh, you know, she's talking over the phone oh, oh. to the person who has ditched her. Okay. Oh. And she becomes like a baby, oh, oh. you know. Okay. So it was very important to do this. All this I would tell Manu, for right, example. Right, right. So that she come up with the right kind of costume. Right, right. I, I remember then that when we first worked together, uh -huh. it was on a single costume. Uh -huh. A single scene, actually. Uh -huh. Which was uh, Tarang. Tarang, right. The last scene of Tarang. Uh -huh. And she was surprised that I went into such great detail. Uh -huh to tell her how they will speak, you know? Because the dialogue there is based on the Rig Okay. You know? How the movement will be, and what the location will be, where the rays of the, the sun rising sun mm -hmm. will fall, mm -hmm. and where, for instance, the head will turn, one of the things was a scarf okay. for the man. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
somehow to uplift that. Uh, some of the aspects uh, which are there in representing mm. uh, the Rig Veda, otherwise, mm. uh, in the popular imagination. We have to up use the popular imagination, but to uplift, uplift it. Okay. Because basically, uh, Urvashi in the, in the Rig Veda mm. would have been a naked, would have at least a naked torso. torso. Mm. We couldn't have that. Right, right. Uh, so all these questions, I went into, and she was very surprised. It, and she told other people, this is the way, this is the way yeah. one should be working all yeah. the time. In fact, she used to say that in terms of uh, going in depth, you were like her soulmate. Really? <laughs> she would say that. Because oh, how nice. Even, uh, even Alaknanda mentioned that too. In fact, I'll send you, if I, I think I should have it. There's a letter by Alaknanda talking about this place. Achha, achha. So I'll send her. Yeah. You know, she's archiving everything. Yes, that's what she was saying. So and I've offered my services once my mother's is done. Yes, it's. I shall come and do any donkey work that you have. <laughs> I'd be well, privileged to do it. Thank you very much. I'd be very, very privileged to do it. God knows if I'd be around, so, so. but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something. So it started from one costume. Uh, in Tarang. In Tarang. And, uh, in the then it went to Khayal Gatha, I think. Next was Khayal Gatha, right? After Tarang, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. yeah. Uh. Khayal Gatha was an old film. It was a period film. Do you have any photographs of that? Yeah. Hmm? Because the ones that um, Mita had sent me weren't very good. Yeah, I will send, mm -hmm. I will send you some. Mm -hmm. In fact, Alak has mentioned going back to uh, the place, how uh, you and my mother and she, they were, you had discussions on the costume. And yes. The, and the costume, uh, was so good that it helped, helped her, her. her movements. Her, her, right. uh, she said, I didn't have to worry about the costume when I was on stage. Yes. You know, it was. Banu was very, very particular about how the actor felt oh. when, you know, sort of. Uh, performing. Performing, mm. uh, whether it is for the stage or. Right. Cinema. Right. right. And, uh, I think uh, Rekha certainly owes you a lot. Oh, yes. I mean, she must help you in yeah. any possible way. I must show you. In fact, she regularly calls me to ask what the progress is. I send her articles that come out. A lot of articles have come out uh, over these two you exhibitions. Must send the video, uh, hmm? you must send the Zenith video. Yeah, we'll send you the Zenith. Uh, yeah, I'll send right, it to right. her. Uh, interview. Do, do. Even the discussion with. Uh, Kiran Nadar and Ritu Kumar in the Delhi exhibition. Yeah. That's also. That's interesting. Very, yeah, mm, I, I like to that. Then there is also a mm, documentation of my mother's heirloom saris with Radhika Rajay Gaikwad of Baroda has done. She's done that. So, how she's drawn parallels between what was woven in Baroda matching some of the designs yes. and the fabrics. So she was there also at the Delhi opening. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice to get people who know their work well and who appreciate something that is, you know, recognize something somebody else is doing yes. too. But you have to be in a different mind space to be able to do that. You have to be a true um, True blue devotee of your work, really. That's, really That's important. That's important. In fact, even um, Mita, 
talk to me about uh, a play that she did on uh, with Bina Pani Chawla. Yes, yes. And she said that she had so many dance movements yes. and the costume my mother had made gave her that free f flowing yeah. movement. And she said because it felt like a second skin. Right. Which was such a beautiful expression yes. of that, you know. So I think that was... Uh, Yeah, Veena Pani has to participate uh, in some of the discussions as well because she got the backing for those plays. Okay, okay. You know, Kunti and... Okay, okay, the human she, voice, uh, okay. She got the backing. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Was the investor. Okay, okay. You know, one thing that's a bit sad is that uh, costumes uh, in the West or any other place, they're actually stored right. or, or given to the uh, actor for storage. So recently there was an exhibition at the VNA uh, called The Diva, where they had tried to recreate a lot of the costumes, exhibit a lot of the costumes uh, from the past, uh, the grand costumes, you know. Yeah. And they were all, uh, you know, by courtesy of the artist, the actor or the uh, Or the, the studio? Actor. Some uh, majority seem to be the uh, actor or the uh, actress. Um, maybe a couple were from the studio. We had uh, we had that tradition also in India. Prabhat Studios, where the film institute is now, mm -hmm. actually used to preserve the costumes. In fact, one we had several sheds when we had joined mm -hmm. the film mm -hmm. institute. Yeah. I was one in one of the first batches, mm. the third batch, and uh, one of the studios, a huge area, was de was devoted more or less to that. Were any of the costumes from your films or theatre in there possibly now? Or, uh, I doubt it. I remember for Charizard, we actually had to they wanted it all back to you to see. And we knew that they would be jumped. We wouldn't care. We don't care. And for sure, a lot of the costumes here, I believe, the production house, instead of storing them, leave them to the uh, extras. The extras. In the film costumes are generally given to extras after they've been used by the star. Oh. The only person uh, who used to keep them very well was Raj Kapoor. Yeah. But that whole place he caught also fire. Had that idea of building up this, mm. you know, a but that his whole that place kind. caught fire. Everything got destroyed there. There was a fire. Yeah. That's a pity. Did she ever work with Raj Kapoor? So many films. She started with Nadira in Sri Char Sobis. Then uh, she went on to Sangam. So she did one particular character. In, in uh, yes. Nadira's was the first one that she did, but like Mera Nam Joker, she did a lot of them. She did Padmini and she did uh, the Dharmendra and the, ja uh, the Russian uh, trapeze artist. So she did it for Simis, so they, because they were different phases, yeah. so she did it for that. And uh, Sangam, she did Vajanti Malas. She must have done wonderful work for that. She Conrad did. Conrad Rooks thing. Yes, Siddharth. Siddharth. So what made these fellows, the publishers, leave out that film? There's not a mention of it even. That what is wrong with them? That is the sad thing, you know. Uh, anyway, I'll tell it to you. <laughs> the, uh, it's um, Simi is most offended that she, her film wasn't mentioned there and her work and my mother had done a lot of work for her privately also I know so much and they she were so close visitor. yeah they were so close so um, when I called her to tell her that my mother had passed she gave me such a mouthful and she was so angry she was so hurt you know that uh, 
why should I talk about your mother? She never talked about our relationship and our things. But the, you see, Harper Collins was doing a coffee table book where they wanted more pictures and they didn't have the space. And so my mother, in fact, always said that her second book will be the one with all her sketches and the costumes uh, from the movies overlap so that people can actually see it all. And that's why till now, Simiji won't talk to me. <laughs> I mean, I, in fact, told her, I said, you know, please forgive my mother because my mother really loved you very much. You were really a true friend of hers. So just let it go, you know. It's let my mother be at peace wherever she is. But Amrita keeps saying that, you know, Simi just won't talk about it. Hoga, if the time is right, it will happen. Mm. But you have the photographs of those? I don't have too many. That's the problem. Because there was a uh, issue with getting them from the production house because it had changed two hands. Mm. So except for I think two pictures that my mother had, we didn't have anything else. Is Conrad Rooks still alive? No. And uh, Razia Sultan also they left out. Hmm? Razia Sultan, they did show a little bit. But uh, I tried with Tazdar Amrohi. I spoke with him. I said, you know, where are the costumes? He said, I don't know. I, uh, there was somebody else who directed it after Kamal Saab passed away. I see. So you contact them. I don't have their number. He sent me on a wild goose chase. I asked Hema ji, and then later I asked Zinat. Both said, oh, Tazdar knows exactly where they are. I if see. they're there, but he will not tell. Look at this. <laughs> and Hema ji keeps saying, you know, get pictures of that. That was, those costumes maybe were my most favorite. And my mother did a lot of films yeah, for her. Was superb. superb. And she did the armor and everything and uh, Dharmendra's clothes, everybody's clothes she did there. Really one of the crowns from yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the helmet kind of thing. Well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's you'd have to correct all this through the archive and probably a new book. Yes. Did you ever see any of her costume sketches? Uh, yes, so of course I did. So she would show them to you. So she would make uh, costume sketches and show them to you and then you would, I guess, approve There it. is a customary way of doing uh, costume sketches and uh, which is, which incorporates the idea of movement, tries to, very difficult to do them, to do them right. And in fact, even such great artists like Rodin, the great sculptor Rodin, uh, tried. Mm -hmm. After he saw the dancers from Cambodia, you know, they, had, they were visiting Paris at that mm -hmm. time. And, uh, it's very difficult to do. Most of the time, those sketches are not quite indicative of the depth to which one goes in executing, in executing it. it. Uh, right. That's why you have to be very careful even in judging from the sketch, you know, how the costume might have actually turned out and how finally that was filmed. That's why I used to tell her, we are going to film it in this way as well. Yeah, she would need to know how you were. Yeah. So doing she it. would need to know how the costume would move, is what you're saying. Yeah. And Unfortunately, also many of the uh, film people think that that the costume designing is as if just meant mainly for the heroine. You know, that uh, that by itself uh, takes care of everything. It doesn't. Like I was to go, uh, about to tell you earlier when I talked about Ramsey Chandragur, uh -huh. one of his greatest shops 
was when he shifted from Calcutta to Bombay. Mm. He said he had designed a set mm -hmm. for one of the big houses, I mm. can't remember which. Mm. And there were these, let's say, mm. sofas that he did. Mm. And as usual, the there, there had been no meetings between uh, the director, director, right? costume designer, Set camera right. person, mm. or uh, mm. production designer, mm. Mm. or Bansi, or any mm. anybody. So he said, the heroine arrived late, and she went in the same cloth mm. and sat on. Imagine on the chair. Huh. You know, imagine a, somebody so just dressing walking in and just coming. velvet mm. of some kind, red velvet, and then sitting on chair which is also draped in the same way. The entire emotional whatever equation must be destroyed. Totally, totally. So he said, no matter what you do, this industry can't can't give you an, anything worth anything. No, because nobody uh, bothers to find out, even for instance the cinematographer, where he's going to place the lights, what angle he's going yeah. to take. All those things need to be taken into consideration. And there have to be, there has to be an understanding between all these people. Mm -hmm. you know? So unfortunately, uh, the talents like Manu oh. were not fully utilized. You know, her, her, what she has done for uh, the heroines is oh. extraordinary. Yes. But those films did not live up to. No, no. Those films did not live up yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Actually, uh, first time if somebody mentioned a certain technical aspect of the sketches mm -hmm. that uh, you had to incorporate movement, you had to visualize, I guess, the context of the s scene and all that, but also how it would play out, right? Uh, so she would make a sketch. So when you say a sketch, because her sketches can be two types. One is a very in-depth, like almost looks like a miniature painting, you know, for watercolor, beautifully done. Another sketch is more like uh, line drawings with some concept notes. I mean, so they both both of them exist. Both both of them are there. What would she come back to you with? Uh, she'd come back to you with uh, like a line drawing, a conceptual idea, or a fully executed. Do you have any recollection of that? Well, we used to look at a lot of things together as well, apart from her sketches. And also after she showed him the sketch, she said that you would give in your inputs yes. where you wanted things changed. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why there are, I guess, multiple versions yes. of her sketches. Yes. So then she would build on that because... That, that, that material would also change. You know, yes. The, she would go around to all the inner central Bombay shops hmm. to find that material. Yes. Because, yes. like in the case of yeah. I told you about Kunti. Right. For every scene, you needed a different kind of material because the light on it falls very differently. For instance. Uh, When we were discussing one of the costumes, uh, I can't remember which one, uh, she had got satin mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked about the qualities of satin. Now, satin has a very interesting mode of reflecting the light. Light, that's right. You know? yeah. And it governs the entire sexuality of the Islamic world. Because the way yes. 
It reflects light. The Prophet Muhammad had said that it is wrong to wear silk oh. because it's too attractive. I see. You know. And I think the other prophets went along with it. It is a long Judeo Christian Islamic <laughs> thing. Sort of years of history. And uh, so Saturn evolved out of that <laughs> as a material. Right, right. But and also again, because of its free flowing uh, body. The body of that fabric is so free flowing, free flowing. that it goes with the movement of the uh, yes, person wearing it. Exactly. That is also very important, right? Yeah. It comes back to your thing about the movement. Yes. It's slightly heavier than silk. Yeah. And so it drapes in a very it, different yeah, way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Alaknanda was living for a while in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so, Bahrain was the most progressive of the Emirates and all that. But, you know, they even had beaches where Islamic women would be in their swimming costumes and all that. But uh, they had a lot of women in Burka. But she said, you should know how they dress under the Burka. She had told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, I think she must have told Banu as well. And they were um, so uh, in with the latest fashions. Yeah. People there. Well, Raz, Razia Sultan, I mean, huh? a lot of the inspiration for that movie, uh, you know, for costumes, is, 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 is Islamic. I mean, uh, yes. Where, where, I mean, obviously it had, it had to do with the period, Razia Sultan. And, and it's so. the Persian influence and, you know, things right. like that. that but uh, my, my point I make is that it doesn't seem as if it's necessarily the, only a Mughal influence. It seems no, 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 no. It predates Mughal. It's predates Mughal, right. It's predates so, Mughal. Mm. So, in a sense, that's the uh, uh, thing about Bhadu. Uh, somebody mentioned that uh, when a movie was being, uh, Ashutosh mentioned was when Lagan was being shot or, or conceived, they had said that we would make uh, the movie around 1890s. Yes. Uh, but Bhanu actually reverted back saying that was when they were mourning uh, the Queen's death, so make it 1895, 1896, with you to add much more color. Similarly, in this case, uh, we have Razia Sultan, which is a very fan like uh, Islamic costumes. I mean, it's not Mughal, it's no, it's, it's, it's Persian. It's Persian. It's Persian that has influence has come. So there's a, you know, obviously there's a, there's a lot of grandness in those costumes, but yet it's historically correct or historically inspired. Yeah, it would. Also, Kamal Amroy must have. Uh, wanted it that way. Yes, yes. I don't know what happened afterwards after yeah. his death. Kamada Brui was quite a strict director. You mentioned Bhalu's studio. I mean, was it a place where you mentioned, I think, uh, Simi used to come? Uh, were they he used to come up uh, to the sixth floor yeah. as well, where we were, to meet her. Rika, I think I, have, I saw Rekha several times in the lift. Yes, yes. And she was a you know, very ordinary looking yes, woman. Yes, absolutely. But you know, Rekha was a great student. Yeah. She picked up so much. In fact, she's written in her note also yes. that whatever she knows about Indian dress or uh, the embroideries or the culture, the social aspect of costumes, she learned from my mother. And she was, I mean, look at her today. Yeah, yeah. What an absolutely. It's a uh, complete makeover. Total makeover. Yeah. And her knowledge and her. Uh, she's always studying, always learning. 
you know, not many people in the Hindi film industry were really interested in that. You know, even say the producer or the director, heroine ko achha dikna chahiye. Ah, wohi. Wohi, na? That, that is their idea. I mean, what is your, <laughs> I mean, there must be some kind of jhagmag, there must yes. be, you know. It can sometimes be really and Sometimes it's so sort of out of place with the scene. Most so of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. So she had to really maneuver those things. I mean, there were very few directors like you or say Ashutosh Gowarikar or Guru Dath, people who um, seriously thought about the full aspect of the which were the films she did with the Guru Dath? She did lots of them. She did uh, CID, uh, Sahib Bibi Kulam, uh, Pyasa, Kagas Ke Phool. So that's how Vahida Rahman. Mm. Vahida, she started with the first movie, CID. Yeah, yeah. They both. My mother's first movie was for Kamini Kaushal, right, which was yeah. Aas in 1953. Yes. So. Which was your first uh, theatre film in which year was that? Uh, Which was in 72. 72. Uh, my other friend was Where are these uh, films available? Like uh, the memoir is available on YouTube. Yeah. Some of the other films are also available on YouTube. Of course, I, I don't like it at all. I mean, there was one I'd worked on celluloid. I'd like yeah. to s show them on celluloid. Uh, four of them are available on celluloid with the Brisbane archive. Okay. It's, a, it's a, actually the Queensland Art Gallery. Mm -hmm which bought four of them, okay. uh, for archiving. What about the Film Institute? Would they have it that their alumni work now? Film Institute and the National Film Archive, which will oh, have some oh. of them. Uh, all of them, in fact, are under great stress now because the present government doesn't want Yes these kind of institutions to survive. Right. right. They say this is all Meruvian, mm. etc. So they made something quite astonishing because the, the archive has now been made part of a corporation. Now archives are not allowed to be part of a corporation. Archives by the, there's a federation of uh, Film archives in okay, the world, okay. which is allowed to exchange negatives. Uh -huh. You know, okay. like any film that they have, they can exchange a negative with another archive across the globe. Okay. And the archive then is allowed to show it. I see. Okay. You know, but uh, they are not allowed to become a corporation. Or become part of a corporation because corporations naturally want to go to the market. Right, right. So this kind of thing they don't fit into the rules of. A they don't fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is for film market. Right, yeah. right. I'm just going back to the conversation on motion. So another thing that's very important in shoots is lighting, whether it's yeah. a light, dark shade. We also it is a, It is the medium of light and sound. It is the medium of light and sound. We also spoke about satin and how. Uh, that uh, has a certain sheen and a certain reflection. So that is obviously also something that is, how is the knowledge of what exactly to put in a costume transferred to a designer? Like, or like what is it like, I mean, this is the lighting, this is the set, this is the storyline, this is what, what all information is given, or is it just the, desi uh, the designer has to go around collating the information, or is it, how, how does it work? I work very closely with all my technicians and uh, I even encourage them to interact with one another yeah. as far as possible. So, uh, and 
not many people do that in the industry. No, no, no. So, uh, for instance, I could even tell KK, who was the closest of mm. KK margin, mm. closest of the technicians, you know, and he would just tear his hair after <laughs> that. I want the smell of a rose to be there in my in my shot. And it need not necessarily be through a costume which is like a rose. But the whole movement and the lighting should be such that there is a fragrance of some sort which appears. And he would say Gali de lagta tha. Kaise aadmi ho tum kya bafas kar rahe ho? But that's the kind of conversation one has to. And I would insist. Because you're so visualizing the whole. You're visualizing the whole. Yeah. You see, so and you know what you want. Exactly. Okay. In a normal commercial film, most people yeah. don't know what they yeah. want. So. I mean, they for think it's absurd. For instance, a film like Lagan was shot in Y in Maharashtra, whereas they had to show a UP yeah. landscape. So people would come wearing Maharashtrian clothes as extras and they had to be changed right. so that the look was right. So that was a kind of uh, like there was that, uh, in fact, in relation to that, the elderly widow uh, my mother said is she supposed to be from Maharashtra or UP then that depends on what color she'll wear a Maharashtrian widow will wear dark colors right. in the north they'll wear white yes. you know so uh, exactly. now know. somebody like Ashutosh knew what he wanted so that was easy but most directors she had to do her own research. She was given a script. Right. She was given a briefing by the director. But she generally didn't get to talk to the cameraman no. or the, uh, you know, the set designers. She did. No. And they, they, were not, they were not aware of what one can do through the lighting, for example, or the sound. Uh, I, she can tell you a few stories about she had gone to, when we were shooting Charajah, she'd go to the shops to try and get the right kind of material oh. for me. And yeah. I would describe to her, she makes a lot of fun of me mm -hmm. by telling that story. That he asks for things which are impossible to get, more or less. And yeah. of course, the Calcutta shopkeepers, yeah. they wouldn't even get up. Even if they had the material, they would not. They wouldn't get up and <laughs> take, it out. take it out. Yeah. What would they tell you, Mommy? Well, I got them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you got them. them. But what, what would they tell you? That is so the one where the she's Nandini is uh, at the end, at the very end, mm -hmm. she's shown in the water. Mm -hmm. It's like a bit like I mean, she's being killed by her lover. Mm -hmm. And uh, to save her. Mm -hmm. to save her. But um, so the shot is of her being washed up literally mm. on the beach, like a Durga Pratima. Right, you know? right. And uh, so Kumar wanted a water which was a watery silk, but which would have a suggestion of silt and mud okay. on it mm -hmm. when the when the light falls on it. Mm -hmm. Now this is something you cannot actually tell the shop. Mm -hmm. So I had to create another language to find mm -hmm. that. And finally we got this Bishnupur silk thaan, mm -hmm. which was exactly that. Mm -hmm. And then when it was actually put in the water, when, when she wore it, mm -hmm. and she was wearing some of it and some of it was torn like a strip that was flowing. Right. And there would be the, these highlights. So. Actually, in relation to that, I know I shouldn't be asking, but I was just thinking for no, no, Khayal Gatha, because we were working on the, on yeah. the stills, right. 
it must have presented a very different kind of challenge for Bhanu because you in fact had so little material in that film. It was mostly stone and foliage. So I don't know if it's these old like monuments in Bandav. Who oh, oh, oh. so would like to follow up on that? Right, right. Against which the costumes were. It, they were not sets in the conventional sense. Uh -huh. And there was a lot of greenery, as the sum of it was during the monsoon. Uh -huh. And the rest of it was this ex extraordinarily colored um, stone, stone and architecture. Uh -huh. Very uh -huh. wonderful uh -huh. architecture, uh -huh. which, which had its own materiality. Right. So right. the costumes for that, I mean, I thought maybe one could. And there's a saying that Shabe Malva oh. and Shabe Avat oh. are like, they transport you to another, another world. world. Another yeah. era. And yes. So I had to deal with that. Uh -huh. This I told her as well. Mm. You know, that costumes will be lit for that Shabe Malva. She had come to Malva. So mm -hmm. She came. She came for the trip. You were talking about you know the Khalgata costume. Talk about the Khalgata. Khalgata. How many? Like how big a set was that? How many? There was no set like that. There was no set. I mean, how big a can? I mean, how big a stuck? How many people? There were palaces. There were different locations. All these mahals. In different three, four places, Shivpuri, Gwalior forts, mm. and then different parts of them. So some in the dungeon, some on a turret, some in open pavilion. So that's what I was thinking. The costumes mm. would have to be sort of working at multiple levels. Right. Also because they were linked to the Raga. Yes, because they were. That's what uh, Mummy had. That much I had heard mm. that you had wanted them. Uh, in a sense, to give an indication of the rag also. Yes. So, so we were constantly looking at different, together, different miniatures. Huh. I would ask her to come over and I would show her this. It's the same miniature I would show to my cameraman. Okay. To KK. Mm -hmm. And, and so on. You know that that is the procedure, and of course, uh, I would tell her about what kind of movement there would be. Yeah. Basically, uh, the the movement which is most important vis-à-vis -vis Karal yeah. is that whole Central Asian tradition, which comes to. Uh, India and liberates Kathak from just storytelling to dancing. The Kathak is starting right. to start with this Katha. Right, Katha. So yeah. it was mainly miming yeah. earlier. Yeah. So, so what it does is that the Abhinaya yeah. uh, is mainly torso up. Torso up. Okay. You know? huh. And the dance steps are such as to not interfere with that, you know. Okay. And then at uh, when Bulabai was, the, you know, done away with, that Akash, Akash Ganga came there. And some of the tradition from Bhulabhai then shifted to Akashkanga. I'll tell you how. For instance, Rohini Bhatti huh. used to come and teach at that time. Okay. At uh, Akashkanga. And Annapurna Devi lived there. Oh, okay. And the Ravi Shankar's hmm. former wife. And uh, so I used to meet uh, Rini Bhatti regularly. And the, that part of it, 
is the torso. Uh, you see that kind of movement in uh, something which has almost been dropped out of Kathak now, performance, okay. which is called Thak. Oh, okay. And that, it's interesting, you know, how, how much you can go into depth. All this I told Balu uh -huh. as well, when we, before right. we went for the shooting. As I was doing the research, I was telling her. So that thought uh -huh. is very slow. It's like an alap. Right, okay. You know, like a Ravi Shankar right. or right. Ali Akbar Khan mm -hmm. alap. Mm -hmm. And quite rightly, what it does is that it gives the architectural setting, mm -hmm. that means structural design mm -hmm. is created by the movement of the torso, mainly of the shoulders and the, and this. The arm. The this arm. Oh, must have been of the gungat. Right. You know, and that is its principal movement and then the, the movement below the torso is of a of the kind that finds its fruition in flamenco. Uh, you know? Okay. Okay. All this I used to tell her about. And she was obviously very interested. So it's a a bit akin to uh, tap dancing too. Yes. That kind that of dancing thing. takes off. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So you are, in, in a sense, alluding to the complexity of the costumes that are made for Calvary. Now you talk about all this. The complexity of filmmaking, it should be that. Okay. Every, everything that one does, you know, it cannot be through chat GPT that you do. How does one show a lot? You have to do, you have to go into that kind of, and sense it in your body. Right. Right. Which is what every very good technician does it. The, your whole nervous system has to come into play. Vis-a-vis yeah, yeah. -vis costuming, vis-a-vis -vis lighting, vis-a-vis right, right. -vis sound recording, and finally editing. So one background, lighting, costume, etc., movement, all build up a rag is what you're saying. That's a composition. A composition. And each has to be different, of course. I mean, you're, you're yes, each scene must be. Otherwise, what's the point? Otherwise, the, point. Otherwise the computer can't make it. Right? You're right. E each scene has to be like that. In fact, each shot has to be like that. The person I worked with in, in France, uh, because he could afford it as well, Nobody can afford it yeah. Yeah. in India. Yeah. You should take 40 takes. Oh boy. For a simple static shot, even. Like he would take just your saying, oh boy, right. 40 times and select out. Select from that. Wow. Because he didn't want a standard response from the actor. What we do, of course, is try to plan it much more because we can't afford that. We don't take 40 days. And we have to uh, try and work before the shooting a lot with everybody. Right, right. So then the very first take, and KK, who worked like Banu a lot in the commercial industry, KK had done 92 films. Oh, oh. Or thereabouts, right. under 100. Right. Uh, and he worked with Sipi mm -hmm. and Brunal mm -hmm. and me and you know several other directors. So he used to say that. Did he work with Money Call? Money Call also. also. Mm -hmm. so, uh, usually, when, in our method of working, very often the first take is the best. Even when we take 15, 20 takes, right. 
the first take because we work before mm. it's it's like you in a sense you've been workshopping it yeah till the That's final right. tuning you know exactly, till the, exactly. Uh, so it's and got Manu into everybody's neighbors, system so we were workshopping all the time there's no problem yeah so it go gets into your whole being yeah and you can then express it as exactly such. exactly right right lots to get photographs of these uh The ones that uh, Meeta gave me were very bad. So, please, please, that would be. Would you like like representative shots, like of individuals or movements or costume? Maybe you can choose. I think I think I think you could choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on the discussion, and if you have the Tarang shot. By any chance, that what she did for that? Yeah. We haven't yet started the tarang. Okay. I think, but as and when they come, I'll definitely go okay. okay. in the loop. Take care. Take care. And you have pictures of Kunti and Yuvan voice, no? I've not found any. Kunti, I don't have. I have an, uh, a review of that Achha. in the Times of India. I'll send that to you. I think. By yeah, yeah. I think uh, one magazine also had in England had brought out mm -hmm. an edition mm -hmm. which gave. I tried to find that. Out. Okay. Okay. Which had done that. You are trying to keep uh, film and theatre different. Yeah. Uh, because they are different. Very. And uh, so. You know, the, again, the theatres don't get covered that much. You know, the photographs. Uh, so we try to get as much information from the theatres as possible. So anything uh, even from that. You know. Times of India had done a very big thing on on Kunti and. Uh -huh, okay. So you asked them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, after getting a photographer. I remember the name I said. Mm -hmm. She took a lot of photographs while oh. we were rehearsing. Okay, okay. But she's lost her name. To me. Photographer, remember? Rehearsing what? Rehearsing the. Uh, Kunti and. Kunti and human voice. And human voice. That would be nice. It couldn't have been Sheena Sippy. She wasn't that old then to do. She was much younger. Uh, what about that? What's her name? No, she's. I know oh. her very well. I've just forgotten her name. Sit something. Sit. She was the daughter of the chairperson of Great Eastern Shipping. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, so, granddaughter of Malviya. I see. The great okay. uh, Madan Mohan Malviya. Uh, the not Madan Mohan, the person who was in Nehru's cabinet. Very important politician oh. from. Madan Mohan Malviya. Was it Madan Mohan ah, Malviya. It to menu they will please. Thank you. Thank you. Take a break. Uh, he probably wants to charge his stuff as well. Take us. Yeah, I should go out. Do you want to have lunch outside or in? in huh? They'll serve us here. Well, if you we'll, we'll, we'll you want to sit off. outside, I I'll have to go and I'll it's ask them. It's more pleasant. More pleasant. I'll ask them. No. Right. Right. No. What we are certainly doing is looking for all of Times of India's archives as well. A lot of information is there. Yeah. And, uh, and we're hopeful that this 1958 fashion show. Will and I want out. to go through that archive. You have to get me the permission to go in. Times of India had done a full supplement, I think, on our performance, Kunti. And okay, okay. That will be a good. Full supplement. Uh -huh. I just have one article. 
and they had, they had presented it in uh, Delhi, the Times did. The show in Bombay was sponsored by somebody else. Okay. okay. In Delhi it was Times. Okay. It was and time when Times was actually interested in news and uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, now, now they're just obsessed with films and what the stars do. And, sh and their television channel is only shouting. Oh, yeah, that's not good at all. And they were such nice people. Uh, the, the, what is the name of the guy who does the Republic thing? Arnav. Arnav. Such a nice man he was, young man. Look what he's become. What has happened to him? Oof. I see his face and I feel like, you know, giving him a dressing down. <laughs> Such a nice guy he was. He sold his soul. So, so sad. It's very, very sad. The only person I still enjoy listening to is Rajdeep Sadhvi. Yes. So, yeah, no, that India today is doing good with the that Sadhusai that uh, Rahul do. Ha. And then another person I used to love was Pranoy Rai. Yeah. He was he out completely. Uh, he resisted it all for a long time. Acha, Amra na char pasta jini order korbo. Apni tar pore bolbe niye chheta hobby kina ha club. He used to live here and <laughs> kind of. Because he did a lot of theatre here. Oh, really? Oh. And with the people, other with members? the Calcutta club oh. members. Oh. Then he did some Bengali theatre. Then he did with the, you know, like there were small theatre groups with whom he used to act. Oh, then nice. with Renu Roy, people like that different. Mm. Mm. And the shop that you you ran. The shop that I ran was only from 93 to 2003. Achha. Then I had to give up the place because it was Victor Banerjee's place. Oh, really? He wanted it back because they were going to redevelop it. Uh -huh. So I had to shut And at that point of time, my father also was very ill. He had cancer. So I just shut it and I relocated to Bombay. Yes, yes. And, and you never started anything in Bombay? I didn't start a shop, no. But I uh, still work with the artisans and I'm part of an NGO called The Richa. The Richa. Where we uh, document folk and tribal art and I think you have a very craft. interesting website. Beautiful I've, website. I've, I've which the, it's one of the few the ones that I actually go back to. The person who started it, Mun, yes. Ratnabuli Bose, we have Gautam Ghosh as part of our committee and yes. all that, but none of them have any time to uh, invest. So, but Ratnabali does, in fact, she's just gone to Purulia to record the uh, Shauthals who do wall art. Achha. So, we are trying to get it transferred on paper so that they can have some kind of marketing. None of these artisans have any income, there's no support, it's just so pathetic, so pathetic. And then individuals come in and uh, talk about developing a particular craft and they just become so intrusive and they change the nature of the craft. It's horrible, you know? yeah. It's just, just In the name of the market, right? Yes, yes. I think that's partly, I hate to say this, I think it's the partly the Marwadi trend of kuch naya chahiye. You know, always something has to, certain traditional crafts all over the world have been there for donkey's years. Yeah. They are there, they're part of the intrinsic no, history of each area. Of time. You know, yes. this, uh, I often tell her about another very close friend of mine. Uh, was uh, somebody called Jolly Borua. Mm -hmm. He used to share an office with Charles Correa. Mm -hmm. So he was, Charles Correa was the structural design person, mm -hmm. an architect. And Jolly Borua was uh, 
surface design and he did a lot of uh, things like fairs and all that okay which okay. are temporary right right uh, etc he and his wife actually was also a very fine designer mm -hmm. chitradi mm -hmm. uh, she, her brother was Ritain Majumdar. Ritain Majumdar's okay. sister. Yeah. Okay, so okay, okay. And so, uh, Jolida used to tell me, I often used to go and drop in at their mm. office mm. in the afternoon. It's, uh, you know that old restaurant, Light of Asia, on Hornby Road? <coughs> Just it was okay, upstairs. about that. Okay, about that. okay. And Jolida told me once that you know there are certain aspects of design that you should not even dare to think you can change. change. So, and the one that he demonstrated, he yeah. made sketches and showed it to me. He said, for instance, there are some very foolish people who want to change their design of the gada. Uh -huh. Since you can't change it in any way. Right. You know? right. Because that's the way the woman will, will carry hold it. it. Yes. And this is the way the woman will put right. it on the right. head. And the and material is such that it yeah. keeps the water cool. cool. And there and are different levels of cooling in yeah. that because of this structure. Mm. There was a beautiful da book done by uh, in Bangladesh about the structure and shape of traditional items used yes. in homes and what the uh, reasoning behind that was. Yeah. It was a beautiful book. I mean, I still have it with me. Anytime I'm looking for something, I will go through it. Beautifully done. We don't have that kind of research done here, no? unfortunately. And uh, with then the further representation of such things mm. in space, mm. it can go to further and further uh, almost a metaphysical, spiritual quality. Right, right. You know, like uh, from that region that I was mentioning earlier, huh. know, Rajasthan, Kutch and Kutch Sin. Kutch. Huh. Because that's that's where the ancient cultures met. Oh, oh, you know. Oh. In fact, the land has come out of the sea two yeah. or three times. Right. It has right. been sunk and then again come. Over there. In fact, there was so many traders came. Yeah. Parsis came there. Everybody came. Right. Then you had the Germans coming in. Yeah. So there, this even the surface design has so much to say, mm -hmm. you know? and that must be incorporated in the the old scripts of that time right. as right. well, which have not been yet deciphered. deciphered. Absolutely wonderful, isn't it? These are things which are way beyond any computer. We have to do so much research and sense it with our nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. No, but then for that, we need to go to the places where these have actually come from because you need to study the environment too. Sure. What, what was the existing ambience that motivated right. them to make that. So to reconstruct yeah. it. Yeah. So you can't just see it in a city and then hold forth you on can't. it. You know, you can't do that. Like there's a uh, what they call the Sherpai. In Bengal, we used to have these big wooden bowls. It was they were made for storing grain. Right. So that time there was the weight measured of share, ek share, ek pai, us hisab se. So they were like huge and yes. the zamindars would store it in that, you know, like going up to 15 kilos, 20 kilos and then it would be tapering. So it went on and it became like a yeah. uh, turret, different size bowls that fitted into it. Yeah. And on top of that, they did 
beautiful brass inlay work. Mm. Now today that's of no use. Yeah. Except for making it in a smaller version as a decorative piece. <laughs> you see, that's the only way you could fit and or making just the top one to make it like a shindur coat or a, you know that kind of thing. But I mean, and we have only one person in Bengal who does that. His he, his wife, and his daughter help him. Right. And we managed to get him last year a uh, funding from Hyundai for one lakh, which was, you know, he managed to get two apprentices to train in this. So hopefully it will be. But nobody wants to do it because how much are they going to earn? They'd rather come to the city and lift bricks at construction sites. You know. Yeah. Are it traditional as a measure? Kunke? Ha, kunke. Kup shudu. Yeah, that's right. She would say technically for which I said just keep mm. it, ma. Mm. I use it. Mm. I actually try and use these things. Yeah. Those yeah. Kartina. Yeah. Um, and that very nice woven thing I've got, that's all actually was Chandal storage in mm. About the fabrics that you were talking about, both of you, I mean, it's just a thought in my head. But why don't you have something like a competition huh? amongst young designers and uh, get them to create something? You will kill me. If I have to do that. No, no, but it be so nice. Actually, so some what we need to do as app is exactly identify the fabrics in the region and all the other information that. No, they could. That could be part. No, of in the fact, thing. I spoke to Juhi Babar just three, four days ago, and she says she will get me young students from NIFT who will do it as separate projects exactly, for them. Exactly, that's, that's what I was thinking of. That's so. exactly what I, in fact, that's what I've written down while you were mm -hmm. talking, that's what I wrote down. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'd be very seen. surprised mm -hmm. if they know very much over these fra fabrics. They won't. Actually, but they could get the a NID mm -hmm. is the place. Their students mm -hmm. are really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they have a lot of in-depth study. Ashok Chatterjee, who had started it, he was he had an, he was really a visionary, and he had made the syllabus that way. So they come out with top-notch designers, mm -hmm. but they don't have clothes. They don't do clothes. But didn't they do? Um, the, and I was frankly speaking, I was very disappointed. Who did the designs for the railway stuff recently? Recently, meaning about three, four years ago. Not an idea. Not an idea. One of these. NIFT must be. They were so. NIFT, I think. Like the. They had no organic. Uh, like the Air India one. Them. Again, uh, we have to think. Kara Porche, what is the work they do? Uh, who are they serving? It, no thought had gone into them. Also, it must have been NIFT, not them. But she, uh, you may know her, no? What's her name? Um, she does a lot of work with fabric. Uh, Nina Sablani. Oh. She's she's from uh, Ahmedabad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can just ask her, send her like small samples and what is this? You know, where is Actually, work? my uh, plan in my to-do list is to keep cuttings, identify them, upload them on the computer mm -hmm. and ask people if they have any inputs on those particular fabrics mm -hmm. and if anybody wants to use them, you know, that is, but that has moved down on my priority list yeah. because so I have a uh, excellent taskmaster who every day comes up with something new which he puts on my head to do. Mm. <laughs> No, I know personally two young artists. One is Bhasha Chakraborty, hmm. who works a lot with fabrics. Uh -huh. And she is based at Yale, uh -huh. but she keeps coming here because okay. she's half Marwari and one part of her family. Her mother was is my dear friend. Okay. So she, for example, would be one very good person, you know, who's an artist. Hmm. And, and her parents are designer. both philosophers of a very okay. uh, 
We're okay. also looking for an art critic who can uh, look at her costume sketches and uh, do justice to them from an art criticism point of view, putting them into perspective in the whole you know, art movement. Uh, there was somebody in London affiliated to VNA. Unfortunately, that you know, I use the past tense. Uh, it's not an easy skill. It's not an it's easy. Not it's not an easy uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out who. Like Ranjit was quoted, did this beautiful article on my mother. Yes. In fact, it's on the Princeps website. Okay. You can read it she there. Did I quote you the article? Or has to Which one? No, place? you plan to. No, because she's just this one incomplete sentence. In the yeah, you were saying that. <laughs> So we have we have had very good critics. I can call her and ask her. Yeah, you can do that probably. Yeah. Uh, very good critic who has two critics actually who have covered her art period. That was when she was in JJ school and part of the progressives. Yes. 48 to 52, 1948 to 52. But we realize that there's a big shortcoming in shortcoming things to overwork. Thing that needs to be done is we need an art critic to look at her costume sketches as art. And, if, and and understand and so like the points you're making about motion and all these things would be very critical uh, in, in in that but you know we need somebody who's got an experience in I think maybe you will find somebody who's been doing criticism of Hollywood films. Are you talking about Ketaki set? Ketaki, yes. No. Ah. <laughs> Uh, do you have a contact number? I'll try and find it. Okay. Please. It is for Charu there. Today is for Charu there. Tushar Taluk there was very, very helpful. Is he oh. still in Calcutta? Do you know him? I don't think so. He was the commissioner. Mm, I, know, I know. And so he gave us permission to go to the, one of their museums, mm, mm -hmm. which was, I think, off. Um, Somewhere. Oh, that's the, uh, training, the, the training school. Achha, we used to collect that's the guns training from school. there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. In fact, I went there to do research also. Mm. And this Damascus thing, I didn't want to interrupt them, but I'm huh. very curious. The Damascus uh, Cotton Fair, yes, huh. uh, she was asked to do a uh, line for Khatao. But I can't find any records except for a couple of stamps that were brought out at that time by Syria, by Aleppo. At Aleppo, can you imagine? I mean, they were hubs. Absolutely. What fantastic things. I remember my mother still telling me, hey, it is Shabdan, it is my only remaining Damascus oh. tablecloth. White on white. I still have one. Amar kache ekta ache my Amar shashuri. Because they had come from Burma. So. Yeah, now you can't even source it from the countries. Because of now you get the imitation at Bombay Dai. No, it was she the way of uh, your mother's exhibition. Uh, the, the, those places which hosted her wouldn't have it. Because those, those countries are themselves going through civil war. Yes, and the problem is that because um, Khatao did it to participate there, I mean, they would be the best source to get the information, Absolutely. you know. Actually, because we've got so much history, I find most people don't value it. So, you know, I mean, greats like him, you know, they disappear from people's memories. Everybody's memory is short-lived now. You need to watch a reel for two minutes. Your attention span is only that much. And nobody bothers about reading, about going in-depth into anything, which is so unfortunate. No? I mean, their knowledge is so superficial. An actor, shop janta bhavaj, you know. Oh, I don't need to do that. I know about this, you know. It's inevitable. Yes, but there is a section of academia 
for instance. Even that is being tossed up. You know. I mean, someone like Romila Thapar. What an amazing, she's like an institution. So how can you suddenly chop out chunks of our history? <coughs> What kind of continuity do you give to the children of tomorrow? Well, it helps, I think, uh, 